Hi, I'm Julie Carla from Thermo Kitchen and today I'm doing an unboxing of the TM6. So if you're watching, perhaps you have just got your new TM6 and you're watching to learn how to do the TM6 setup, or maybe you are thinking about buying a Thermomix. Either way, I am going to show you everything you need to know to get yourself all set up. Okay. So first of all, we are opening one box and we have some brochures and our basic cookbook. So all the recipes from this cookbook are actually preloaded onto your Thermomix. So I am a virtual consultant, so I look after people um, all around Australia. We have our spatula. So if you are thinking of purchasing, um, I can help you. So this is our um, manual for, um, for the Thermomix. And the Thermomix. Just get this out of the way. The first thing you want to do is pull the cord out. And we want to pull it all the way out until we see the red um, tape and then plug it in, turn it on and hold in our selector. Okay now it's going to take a little while for um, things to come on because the Thermix has to unpack its software and get um, itself in order and that can take a few minutes. Okay, so here we are. We have to choose our language. So we're gonna come down here. And the first option is English, but we're not going to select that one. We're going to scroll down a bit further and you'll see English Australia. So we're gonna tap on English Australia and then hit the forward arrow button. And then Australia is highlighted. So then we're gonna go forward arrow again. And now it asks us to connect to a network. So we hit search for networks. Great. And now we choose from a network here. So I'm choosing my network and we need to put in our password. Okay, a good tip is whenever you're adding passwords to the machine is to always hit show password because tapping on the touch screen, um, it's very easy to tap the wrong uh, number or letter or skip a number or letter. Whereas when you can show the password, um, you can actually correct yourself more easily. So hit login and successfully connected. So lovely. We are now going to hit forward and we put in our Cookadoo account details. So before I do that, Cookadoo, what you need to do first is you need to go to your computer and go to um, cookadoo.com.au and you want to set up a trial account. So you go to the uh, website, set up a trial account, put in your email address and password, and then you will get an activation email. You hit the activation email and activate the account, and then you are ready to come here and enter the same email. And then your password. Remembering to put show password in case you make a mistake. And then you enter. And then we get our safety instructions. So make sure you do read these safety instructions. So you want to go through them individually. There's 11 of these and they're very useful. The last one, read all the instructions. Okay, so final, yes, we've read the warning. Wonderful, and there we go. So we are in here. Now what you'll usually find is there will be um, an update that needs to happen. And um, this update is the best time to do it is actually when you first get your Thermomix because it can last between 10 and 20 minutes and you won't be able to use your Thermomix during that time. So you wanna get that out of the way straight away, particularly if you're gonna be doing um, a demo later on with your consultant, like a first cook with your consultant, you want to get that out of the way beforehand. Um, uh, so now's a good time to hit update and um, let that update go ahead. So um, mine just hasn't come up, so I'm just going to go 
uh, settings and updates. It's just going to look for um, versions and updates, search, all up to date. Lovely. Okay, so mine's up to date. So now we're going to go over and look at the goodies that came with the machine. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look. The spatula. So we have a nifty looking spatula. When we put it down on the ground, it doesn't touch the counter. See, we've got separation. It has a little hood here and it has a little um, hook. So the hook is so that we can get this internal steam basket out when it's got hot things without burning ourselves. And the hood is so that we can do this. We can stir while the blades are going without actually um, touching the blade. So we're not going to end up um, getting the spatula caught on the blades and doing any damage to the machine. So that's what that's all about. Okay, this internal steam basket, it sits in here like this. And we use that to cook rice or um, veggies, or if we want to put meat or anything that we don't want the blades to touch, um, because obviously the blades will actually um, break up anything that is in, in the TM bowl. Um, yeah, so put that there, pop the lid back on. Okay, next thing we have is called a butterfly whisk. Kind of looks like a butterfly. Okay, on it, it says speed four. I can't exactly read that, but trust me, it says speed four. And I'll show you how we put this one on. So we look for where the blades aren't, and we just pop that in there like that and then we give it a turn clockwise. And that kind of um, latches it into place. It's not really locked in, but it's locked in enough that um, it won't come out when we use it. So we pop that on, quarter turn, and then it's ready to use. Now what we use our butterfly for is to um, whip cream, whip eggs for like egg whites for um, pavlova or macrons or anything along those lines. Start moving these down the line a little. We've also got a splatter guard. So the splatter guard is used with our high heat function. So this um, will go on top of here. The recipe will ask you for it when it's required. Um, so it goes on top and um, when it's required, um, the arms will come in over the top and it will lock the splatter guard into position. So this will prevent the splatter guard from being removed. And the reason for this is because the splatter guard is usually required when high heat is being used and there's going to be fat that might spray up otherwise. So the splatter guard still allows for um, heat condensation to escape, but it actually protects um, anybody from being burnt. Okay, and when the arms release, we can take the splatter guard off. But like I said, Cookadoo will tell you when you need the splatter guard. Okay, here's our MC. Now we call it the MC, it's short for measuring cup. The reason it's called measuring cup is it's because it's got two measures on it. It's got 50 mil and 100 mil. And you just have to trust me because again, it's very, very difficult to see, but I don't think I've used it as a measuring cup ever um, because I just weigh my meals um, in grams um, in the machine. So the measuring cup has two little knobbly bits. So we put one knobbly bit in first and then push down and our measuring cup goes in. So this is how that sits in. Now the idea of the measuring cup is that it allows steam to escape um, out here, um, but obviously 
it doesn't let lo lots of steam escape and it keeps splatters from escaping. So the measuring cup just sits in there like that. Most recipes will, will by default have the measuring cup in. Okay, now some recipes will say to um, put the lid on and then add the internal steam basket. Now where this is um, asked for is because it actually wants um, the air to escape, but it wants more air to escape than what's escaping with the MC. So this allows a lot more air to escape and um, it actually stops the splatters from going all over your kitchen. So we could have it like that, but then while the um, ingredients are boil boiling away, we'd get splatters all over the kitchen. So this is asked for when we're trying to prevent splatters, but still keep the, um, the, uh, keep the air coming out of the bowl. Okay, now we are going to move on to the Varoma. Okay, this is the Varoma. So this is called the Varoma dish or the deep Varoma dish. Um, and if you just think of it, the word Varoma as steaming. So this is our steaming dish. Now it fits quite a bit in. Um, you could put two kilos of meat in here, like um, pork to make pulled pork or corned beef um, to steam corned beef, which is absolutely amazing. Um, or you could use it for um, chicken breast and veggies or something along those lines. Um, we've got a meal called the chicken velouté meal, which, is, which uses the Varoma and that's fabulous as well. So the um, idea is that you put whatever's gonna take the longest to cook in here, pop it on here. You have a minimum of 500 mils of liquid in the base per half hour. So 500 mils per half hour of cooking. And then when, the, um, when you're getting near the end, say 10, five to 10 minutes, um, you've got a Varoma tray. Now this is where we cook our more delicate items that we only want to put on for the last couple of minutes. So this might be your zucchini or your snow peas or something like that. So when it gets near the last five minutes, you just want to slip this into place, pop the lid back on and um, allow it to keep cooking. And when you're finished, you've got your layers of cooking. So you've got your meat cooking here, you might have your sauce cooking there and you have your um, veggies in on top. So that's what our Varoma um, cooking is about. To use the Varoma, um, we always recommend that we um, have the temperature set to above 100 degrees because that's our boiling temperature. So we always want it to be above that, but usually Varoma temperature is what you use for the Varoma. So now I also want to show you a bit about the screens. So let's take the Varoma off pop in our MC because that's the way you're usually going to see it and we will take a look firstly at our manual mode. So the three circles um, represent manual mode. So the first circle is the timer. So we're looking at a timer here and we are putting three seconds, four seconds, five seconds on the clock and as we turn the timer goes up. So we're setting our time using this one. Now, if I was to tap the second circle, it now becomes large and that means that the selector is now, being, um, is now activating the temperature. So the first click and it goes to 37 degrees. Second click, it goes to 40 degrees. Every click after that is up by five degrees. And then when we go all the way around, the last click is Varoma, which is our steaming temperature. Okay, turn that one off. Now, if we tap the last circle, it's got a blade on it. So if we turn the first click, that activates our arms. So always the blade activates our arms. Now we've got a spoon on the um, picture of the blade now. So that means we're using soft spoons. So that's as slow as our blades can go. And we use that when we just barely want to um, want to move the ingredients around. So that slow spoon is one click. Two clicks is 0.5. Three clicks is speed one. So after that, it goes up 
0.5 from there. Now also you'll notice that there's a blade picture in the middle of um, the blade circle. If we tap on that, it goes into reverse blade mode. Now reverse blade mode is, um, is softer on the ingredients because the front of the blade is sharper and the back is, um, is blunt. Tap the screen to stop the noise. Um, so the blunt side is the reverse blade. So if we're doing something like a chicken curry and we're stirring it slowly and we don't want to break up the chicken, we would tap that and it would go to reverse blade. But these things, if you're in a cookadoo recipe, you don't need to worry because cookadoo automatically activates the correct function. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something really nifty. We are sliding across to functions. Okay, so here, this is one of the things that makes Thermomix so smart. So Thermomix updates all the time and we get new modes and functions um, as with these updates. So even if you're not using your Thermomix for cooking, um, you can actually activate your scales. So you might be using um, another recipe and it might be in ounces and you may want to use scales and convert this to, um, convert this to imperial and weigh um, this out. So we have scales here. So you don't need to be in a Thermomix recipe, you can use these scales. We also have dough mode, turbo, and pre-clean. So pre-clean is another really good um, function and we can choose the level of um, clean that we need to do. If I can, there we go. We can choose the level of clean that we need to do. So once your machine is dirty, um, you can come along and decide um, how much attention it needs uh, and each of the different settings heats the water to a different level. So you just use your one litre of water, a tiny drop of detergent and then decide on the um, level you want. So fat or caramel is one that I use a lot and it will um, heat to 75 degrees. So I find that really useful. Okay, I'm just going to X out of that and we'll go to another setting. Uh, we're not going to go through all of them today. We also have blend. We have egg boil mode. So egg boil mode, if I tap on that one. Okay, egg boil mode, the um, blades don't go round. So it's pretty nifty. Uh, we can just put our eggs in the bottom up to um, six eggs and then top up with a litre of water. Then we X out of this and choose how we'd like our eggs. We can choose between soft, medium soft, medium, medium hard or hard. And um, perfect eggs for every occasion. Okay, sliding back across, we have kettle, warm up, thicken, rice cooker. I actually don't use the rice cooker mode. I have my own rice cooker method and you um, can find a YouTube about that um, in here. Fermentation mode, and I have a YouTube explaining how to do that. I use the fermentation mode on the Thermomix all the time. It's fabulous. Slow cooker mode, sous vide. We also have peeler mode. Um, we have a slicer and grater mode. So this is fabulous. So we're going over to our cookadoo menu now. And you can see here, we have recently cooked, my week, my recipes. So this gives you um, access to Cookadoo right on your screen and you can save recipes to either cook later or it will save recipes that you've cooked recently so you can find them easily. So probably the first recipe you're going to cook will be your vegetable stock paste. And the way you'll find that is by tapping on the looking glass, tapping on the search bar to get your uh, keyboard up and then typing in vegetable Lost that L again. Okay, and then press search. Now we get to see all the different vegetable dishes that we've got, and we can see vegetable stock paste. So we tap on that, and we can scroll up to see the ingredients. And then to start cooking, we just hit start cooking, and we get the first step up. So it's really as easy as that. Okay. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed um, our unboxing today. And like I said, if you are interested in, um, 
in purchasing the Thermomix, please get in touch with me. I would love to help you um, get started on your Thermomix journey. Um, my name is Julie Carlisle and I will have my details below. Um, that'll be my phone number and where you can get hold of me. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. If you are one of my customers, I am looking forward to cooking with you shortly. Bye for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to join me on our Thermo Kitchen Facebook group. Happy cooking.